Hello and welcome to University of Box 2. So I have a suggestion here asking. Could you do if the sun was Beetlejuice? Okay, so I don't know if I've actually done this in my previous uh, star replacement videos. Where I basically replaced the sun with multiple different stars. I don't know if I used Beetlejuice. But Beetlejuice is a dying red star. In fact, it's quite massive as well. In fact, it could have already or might go supernova in the future. And I'm probably going to have a later video on this. But for now, in Universe Sandbox 2, let's see what happens if we replace the sun with Beetlejuice, or Betelgeuse, or really however you want to pronounce it, but if you go look up pronunciation, it's going to be Beetlejuice. I don't know, I got a lot of complaints about that, but that's how I've always heard it. But let's go ahead and replace the sun. So let's see, Beetlejuice should be not too far down this list if I'm correct. I know it is in the game. Let's go ahead and just bring this list up, there we go. There's Beetlejuice. And as you can see, I don't think the solar system is going to fare too well. In fact, the diameter of it expands out to basically Jupiter. So, needless to say, if I place this here, there goes life on Earth. And all these objects in our solar system are probably going to be scorched. The mass of Beetlejuice is, let's see... 8.9 suns in this game. So eight, pretty much nine times more massive than our sun. So I have a feeling when I hit play, horrible things are gonna happen. But for science, let's go ahead and do this. I don't place it as an orbiting object, so it might be drifting a little bit. Um, in fact, it's drifting quite quickly because it was trying to orbit with Jupiter. <laughs> so, my mistake. Looks like Jupiter flew really, really close to it, though. Yeah, Jupiter's a little bit warm now. It used to be really cold, but now it's really warm. Neptune spiked up in temperature, but it's dropping back down. Okay, let's go ahead and redo that simulation. So, where's our solar system? There it is. Let's go ahead and halt time again. Get rid of the sun. We don't need the sun. And let's add back in Beetlejuice, this time not as an orbiting object. I really need to learn that orbiting objects are default in this game. So there we go. This time it is a still object. And let's go ahead and change the background just for visibility's sake. We can see all these little white dots. Okay, that's not a more visible background. I kind of like this purple one. This purple one looks really cool. So let's go ahead and hit play. So, as you would imagine, the extra mass of Beetlejuice is going to pretty much just directly pull these planets in or put them in very, very eccentric orbits. But I think it's a little bit too massive, so everything's just going to go right into the star. And it's consuming the entire solar system. But that was a really cool effect. Oh, look at that. Some of the uh, dwarf planets managed to survive. Or at least large asteroids. Nope, Sedna is perfectly fine. Uh, let's see if I can get it selected properly. I keep selecting the asteroid next to it. Yeah, it keeps flying around. It's basically a yearly comet. And you can see the texture of Sedna, which is normally just a black ball. So well, that's pretty cool. And there it was, molten for a moment. It never really cools down, though. It pretty much always stays over 150 degrees Celsius. But it gets a little comet tail as it goes around, so that's pretty neat. Now let's go ahead and do this while uh, correcting the orbital velocity so things don't fall in directly. So let's go ahead and change the background once more. Let's go for the red one this time. Ah, that's not really too visible. Cyan. Yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, so let's pause the game. 
get rid of the sun, and add in the star. Uh, not as an orbiting object, just right there in the center. And there it goes, consuming everything again. This time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and slow down time a lot. Five seconds per second should be fine, we'll go to tools. And what we want is balance, system, momentum. So I'll hit play and then I'll click this button. Now when I speed it up, everything should be orbiting Beetlejuice just fine. Given, I don't know how long these planets will survive, at least Jupiter there, it's really close. Jupiter's flying up in temperature. You can see it right here. And now it's glowing. 1245 degrees Celsius seems to be what it's trying to stabilize at, but it is going up. Oh no, everything is actually falling apart. Is auto orbit what I wanted to hit? No, now it's just automatically orbiting next to the uh, largest body. I could have swore it was balanced system momentum. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was the auto orbit button. Oh, okay, it was auto orbit. Auto orbit under the power setting or sim actions, not the star itself. Okay, my mistake. I am all too familiar with mistakes. Let's go for this blue yellow background this time. Pause the game, add the star, still object, right in the center. Tools, more, auto orbit, let's go ahead and slow down time again, just to ensure that it auto orbits. Hit space to get it going again, auto orbit once more, and speed up time. Yeah, now everything's all balanced and happy. So it looks like Jupiter stabilized at 1236 degrees Celsius. So that is incredibly warm. In fact, that's a Kelvin scale, but it's going to go to Celsius, which are the same increments, it's just Kelvin starts at absolute zero, while Celsius starts at the freezing point of water. So the yeah, Jupiter's basically about like one third the uh, temperature of Beetlejuice here, give or take some. So Jupiter is a scorched gas giant now. Interesting. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here. And we got Saturn, which is 835 degrees Celsius. So it's almost up there with Jupiter. It's shy about 400 degrees Celsius though. Got yeah, Uranus, which is normally an ice giant. Um, not so icy anymore. It's currently 517 degrees Celsius. So, very warm. Gas giants are known to be very, very warm in the core since they have so much mass around them. Over here, you have Neptune, which is 376 degrees Celsius, which is also considered an ice giant, but I wouldn't say so anymore. Pluto looks like it's holding out. It's not just burning away which I kind of expected it to have comet tail. But no, it's currently sitting at 297 degrees Celsius, so it's incredibly warm, and uh, needless to say, all the nitrogen and possibly methane and other materials that are on its surface are probably supercritical gases or something like that. I don't know, I imagine it's quite a low pressure, but I think the pressure would probably increase as all that gas evaporates, so interesting. Kind of like a little, I don't know, I guess, cold gas greenhouse effect, possibly? Kind of like a runaway greenhouse effect, kind of like Venus, but not so much. Either way, it's pretty scorched. Got Sedna over here sitting at 143 degrees Celsius, which I do think is the coldest, uh, yeah, coldest dwarf planet in our system, if I'm correct, but nope, looks like it's Aries. Eris sitting at uh, 121 degrees Celsius, so 
What's kind of interesting about it though is if you look in the picture, it looks like it's still pretty much an ice ball, but that's not really the case. Um, yeah, that just appears to be mostly the texture that's used for the planet itself, not really so much uh, the material that it's made of in the game anyways. Yeah, there's basically no water uh, on Sedna either, and I think the fate is probably the same for Pluto. Yeah, Pluto contains no water in the game. I never really understood this. Hopefully they do release an update where they get the uh, materials, at least to what we predict, but right now it's just a pure silicate planet. Could just be that the water boiled off. No, I don't th think that's correct. If I go ahead and place Pluto way out here, I don't think uh, it has water in this game. So let's just place it as an orbiting object, like way out here. Yeah, there's no water. It does look like it lost a little bit of mass, though. Um, this one appeared to be a little bit more massive. Anyways, there you go. That is what happens if we put Beetlejuice in the place of our sun. If you guys liked the video, please subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.